so we're gonna move on to Bree Newsom and like other people too. It's not just Bree Newsom. I'm not just picking on her because I did do a video about her when it was in regards to writing, and I even bigged her up in the video because I'm not all about just. I don't want to look like I'm trying to just tear people down, like especially people who like I sometimes agree with their messaging, because I go out at both people. You know, like when Crowder, Stephen Crowder did the video kneeling on George Floyd's necks, like that's scumbag move. You shouldn't do that. I don't even see what the point of doing that is. But when you have people like this just tweeting things out willy nilly, like the person asked her. I keep asking the same question and no one is willing to answer. Just out of curiosity, what would you have been your reaction if the other young lady who was about to be stabbed and possibly killed were your daughter or your niece or your sister? And I'm just curious, what about uh, about your opinion? She said, I would still hold the same position. I don't feel comfortable calling the police for help because there's a strong possibility they could kill me or someone else for no reason. Nothing warranted shooting a teenage girl four times in the chest. And I would disagree. The 15-year-old girl literally about to stab somebody would warrant that like i said it's still a tragedy but it would warrant it and there's not it's not a strong like i don't these words it's a strong possibility how many times the police get called out to places and they actually kill somebody that would be if it was like 90 or an overwhelming even over 50 percent of the time that would be a strong possibility like a small percentage isn't a strong possibility like i said it's always a tragedy but it's not a strong possibility and people see these people with check marks and they'd be like oh my god they know everything they must be educated they must know everything about everything so they run with it and that's their narrative they take these things to the water cooler with them that's why people even on the conservative side when they have a conservative person who parrots what they think and they like okay he said it i believe it so it must be right i go to the water cooler well hey i was listening to tucker last night and tucker said this and da, 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 da. like they're looking for justification of their opinion through people who seem to be verified, seem to be knowledgeable, seem to be big up in society. So they run for that. Whenever their 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 favorite influencer agrees with something that they agree with, that's their validation that okay, what I believe and what I think is right. That's why I think it's it's good for people who have platforms when they speak about things to at least be honest about the way they speak. Because I believe her tweet was something like. Um, let me see. Brie Newsom was eons. She says something about eons. Like people been knife fighting for eons, and it, it, it's not a big deal. Why did the Why did the police have to do this? Let me see if I can pull it up. Will they Will they pull it up for me, please? Twitter, just pull it up for me right away. I don't want to have to search and look for it. Okay, this was this. Teenagers have been having fights, including uh, having fights, including fights involving knives for eons. Like it's like just a normal everyday thing. And I'm gonna keep saying like. If someone is being attacked with a knife, regardless if you started the fight, once they get the knife, um, it goes to another level, right? A lot of people are like, well, it's self-defense if you're fighting with somebody, you feel threatened, you shoot them and kill them, you can call self-defense. Yeah, that's the case. But if you watch the video I just played of um, Makia Bryant coming out the house, there was no imminent threat at that moment when she came out the house. She came out the house and aggressed them. Now, that's not to say they didn't jump her previously. She went in the house. She was upset. She was angry. She called the police. Police weren't getting there fast. And she said, you know what? Forget it. I'm tired of these girls. Comes out with the knife. That's a different scenario. The police can't account for what happened before. All they really can account for of what's going on when they get to that situation. And it did look like, I'm not going to lie, if you watch the video again and slow it down, it did look like, the guy who ended up, I don't know why he even came out the with the with the um heartbreak kick kick. I don't know why he went and kicked the girl. It looked like he tried to grab the knife from Makia initially. Now, as a parent, if I don't know if that's his kid, they're saying foster care, but then you hear somebody say, Oh, my baby, my daughter, whatever, so I don't know if that's her daddy. If you see your kid come outside to fight other kids with a knife, even if you're you're encouraging it. Now parents probably shouldn't be encouraging their kids to go out and street fight with people. But if you are and you see your kid come outside with a knife which couldn't Obviously, turn to a deadly weapon. Just look what goes on in the UK. They can't have guns, so people run around stabbing each other. I'm gonna stop my kid from stab from even attempting to stab somebody, even if they just got jumped by all these people outside. I'm going to stop them from using a deadly weapon to stab somebody because I don't want my kid to go to prison. I don't want that on a felony record. I don't want them to accidentally murder somebody. And I also don't want maybe that my kid don't know what the hell they're doing with the knife. They take the knife from you and kill you with the knife because you attacked them. So that's self defense. So. Like I said, it's all tragic. Let me go back to these tweets real quick. So they asked her that. She said she still held the same position, which I don't believe. I feel like people just have to do that because, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd hold the same position if it was with my niece. Uh, if it was my niece, daughter, wife, if somebody's trying to stab my wife, shoot them. I'm sorry. So she also said the weird thing about people posing this question like it's uh, profound is it ignores how police keep killing the very people who call them for help. 
they sometimes shoot people who are breaking up fights, like Jacob Blake showing up to a scene shooting uh, and shooting immediately is reckless. Now, like I said, it didn't shoot immediately. He got out. He said what's going on, and immediately something happened. It wasn't pop, pop, come up, pop, 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 shooting. It's I pull up, I ask the girl in the pink what's going on, and then literally a second later, she attacks the other girl. She hits the ground. I'm saying down, down, down. You go to cock back and try to stab the girl in the pink, and then he shoots you. That's not immediately. That's that's like she's being dishonest right now. She to, to fit her narrative and her story, she's being dishonest with what she's saying. But people call nine one one because their loved one is a, a, in a mental health crisis. The person may be swinging a knife, may even be violent. The proper response is not to show up and murder them. The police should not be a hit squad, and murdering someone should never be the go to choice. That's um. Her last, that's the last tweet from that, and that's the last response. So, I do agree with that. Like, you know, people going through mental health things, that's one thing. But like I spoke about last, uh, I think last time, because, um, like I said, my son has autism. He's he's young, though. He's not even like, uh, I won't get out of the age on that. But anyways, I've seen, I've seen stories of, like, parents calling the police because their child has autism, and the police doing, like, 13-year-old white kid was in the back alley. He was having a meltdown. They shot at him. They shot him. I think they did shoot him. There was another story of a grown man who was a 30-year-old. He was autistic, and he chased down the police out of the house with a knife. The police shot him, and, you know, although those things are tragic, and I would obviously now I sympathize with those situations, um, and it does, in my opinion, for my situation, it does, I mean, like I said, I guess I can't really be too um, critical of her saying, like, strongly, because certain situations, even though they're anecdotes or, like, small things, if I relate to that situation, it could affect me, just like how people try to tell people of color, like, don't be scared of the police. It's like... Sometimes, even if it only happens to 30 people, you never know. You could be that 30 person. So I get those arguments, but it's just when I see people in regards to this situation, that's not the case. Yes, Makia Brown may have called the, uh, Makia Bryant, I don't know why I keep saying Brian. Makia Bryant may have called the police in her defense, like she called them to help her. But once they got there, all the police scene is that she is the one that came out to be uh, the aggressor in that situation. So I do want to make the point of her saying something about Jacob Blake. Like, look how they did Jacob Blake. Like, no, like just be honest with people. Like, you, you don't have to defend every situation because I feel like a lot of people go around, they defend every situation because they know that if they don't answer it correctly one way, they're, they're sc- so, so scared to lose that that base that they built because a lot of people build uh, bases in, ni- in niche situations, right? Like, so if you're like of the Black Lives Matter actives and you've gained fame through that, you kind of have to stick within that 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 narrative that everything that happens is something that I need to stand behind, I need to get loud about, I need to whatever. So even when something's just blatantly in your face, not whatever everybody's trying to say it is, you may even know it. You really can't speak the other way on it because you might lose your livelihood. You might lose your fame. You might lose your fans. And that's what happened with Fox News. As soon as Fox News on election day started saying, well, Trump lost, uh, he lost Nevada, he lost this. Those people who love Fox News for years, Trump's been present, they start turning on. They start doing all these things. That's why a lot of people be so loud and wrong because, honestly, they're scared to lose their base and they're scared to lose their audience. But I do want to read the James Blake thing just because, like, I mean, the Jacob Blake thing, just because I want you to give the real context. Like, yes, the police did pull up in an instance when he was uh, breaking up a fight, but that's not the full story. So on August 23rd, Kenosha police responded to a 911 call about a domestic incident at approximately 5.11 p.m. According to multiple uh, official sources, the female caller referred to Blake as her boyfriend, said he was not permitted to be on the premises, that he'd taken her keys and was refusing to give them back. Officers were also informed by the dispatcher that there was a wanted alert for someone at the address, indicated by police code 1099. Blake had a warrant for his arrest from July based on charges of third-degree sexual assault, trespassing, and disorderly conduct in connection with domestic abuse. The woman who called 911 on August 23rd to report that Blake had stolen her keys was the same woman who had previously filed the criminal complaint alleging that Blake had uh, sexually assaulted her. Both Kenosha Police uh, Chief Daniel Masikins and the Kenosha Professional Police uh, Association stated that the officers dispatched on August 23rd were aware of the pending warrant and Blake before they arrived at the scene. According to a witness, Blake pulled his car near six or seven women shouting at each other on the sidewalk, and Blake did not say anything to the women. According to other witnesses, Blake was trying to intervene between two women who were arguing when police arrived. According to police union, the officers were dispatched because of a complaint that Blake was attempting to steal the caller's keys and vehicle. So they weren't caught. Like, they didn't just roll up on him. He was, oh, my God, this guy was trying to fight him. They started shooting him because he's breaking. No, no, no. They got called because the woman who alleged that she, this domestic abuse and sexual assault, he was trying to steal her keys. He wasn't supposed to be around her, but he was, and she didn't want him to be around her. That That's the full 
story. You just can't give people bits and pieces because it's dishonest. It's not. It, it, it makes me think of what are your motives when you don't give people the full information to allow them to make their own decision because most people aren't going to read past the headline. Most people are going to read those tweets like, yep, that's what happened. He was just breaking up a fight and they killed him. Or they, he didn't die. They shot him and he paralyzed him. Like, that's, once again, it's sad. Like, you feel bad for you. Like, man, you paralyzed for the rest of your life, dog. But, you know, every situation isn't the same situation. I even said that when that happened. Every situation is not the same situation. It's tragic, even if it's disproportionately black people. Like, that, that's still a, something that happens within the system. It happens with police. They do look at people of color a certain way. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But every case isn't police brutality. That's my main point. Because Charlamagne posts a good, we're going to talk about Charlamagne in a second. He posts a clip of um what's the guy's name he did the nat turner doc uh, not documentary he did the nat turner film and he was speaking on how s police and when they started with slavery how it kind of correlates to today's society of when slaves would try to escape be wandering around they get rounded up by the patrol and they're like why are you not in your area they take you back whip you humiliate you or they'll just kill you dead on the spot i don't think people just kill you for being in the wrong neighborhood but it's still that same thing of why are you here what are you doing here as far as relation to why are you not where you're supposed to be in your area? 